the rolling and yawing moments, and the power of the flight controls to balance them, will determine the controllability of an aircraft with asymmetric thrust. These rolling and yawing moments are affected by thrust on the live engine. Yawing moment increases with thrust, and the further out the engine is mounted on the wing, the larger the moment. Thrust is greatest at low speed and maximum power. Thrust reduces with increases in altitude and temperature, that is, higher density altitudes. The worst case for an engine failure is thus after takeoff at sea level on a cold day. The drag from the propeller itself will depend on whether it is stationary, windmilling, or feathered. But there will always be some contribution to the yawing moment. If the propeller is stationary, it is generating some drag from the blades, which could be at a relatively large angle to the airflow, but no torque. A windmilling propeller will produce a large amount of drag, being driven by the relative airflow, generating both drag and torque. The propeller will also have the load of turning the dead engine, unless an automatic decoupling device is fitted. A feathered propeller will cause the least possible drag. There is no torque, since it is not rotating, and the parasite drag is at a minimum with the blade's edge onto the airflow. If both engines rotate clockwise, the right engine has a longer thrust arm, and failure of the left engine gives a greater yaw moment. This asymmetric blade effect, or P-factor, is absent with counter-rotating and contra-rotating propellers, and of course on jets. The aircraft rotates around its CG, but its fore and aft position has no effect on the yawing moment from a failed engine. The rudder arm is affected, however, with an aft CG giving the worst case with the least rudder effectiveness. When the engine turns the propeller, the equal and opposite reaction tries to turn the engine the other way, the torque effect being to roll the aircraft to the left. If the left engine were to fail, it would result in a bigger rolling moment to the left. As with asymmetric blade effect, this happens only with co-rotating propellers. Note, however, that if the propeller is windmilling, the torque is reversed, but is much less than the torque of the live engine. Any propeller-driven multi-engine aircraft will suffer a loss of lift from the slipstream-induced faster airflow over the wing behind the failed engine. The reduction in total lift will give a tendency to descend, but more importantly, a roll towards the failed engine. The roll is exacerbated if flaps located behind the failed engine and its counterpart on the live side are down, owing to the higher CL. If the aircraft is being flown wings level asymmetric, it will be side slipping, and the dihedral of the forward wing, in this case the port or left wing, will generate more lift, compensating in part for the loss of lift from the slipstream. Any weight increase will require a higher angle of attack at any given speed. This will have the result of increasing asymmetric blade effect with a bigger yawing moment, and partially masking the fin and rudder, making them less effective. Ultimately, the most important element in the control of the aircraft under asymmetric conditions is dynamic pressure, which is a measure of the calibrated airspeed, CAS, which is, in turn, indicated airspeed, IAS, corrected for position error. IAS, of course, is what the pilot sees on his airspeed indicator. Higher IAS means more control effectiveness, 
and consequently greater rudder movement, all other parameters being unchanged. We can summarize the factors affecting the role in your moments when on asymmetric thrust as follows. Thrust on the live engine. Altitude. Drag from the dead engine and propeller. Asymmetric blade effect. Center of gravity position. Torque reaction. Difference in lift from slipstream. Rolling moment due to side slip. Weight. And finally, the vital element of IAS, which determines the amount of control the pilot has over the aircraft.